In this video, we're going to learn how to determine whether a string is a palindrome or not using Python. So a string is a palindrome if it reads the same backwards as it does forwards. So if it's the same as its reverse. So for example, the string race car is a palindrome. If we read this string one character at a time from left to right, we get R A C E C A R. If we read this string from right to left, we get R A C E C A R. So it's the same backwards as it is forwards. A string like A B C E B A is not a palindrome. If we read this string one character at a time from left to right, we get A B C E B A. If we read the string from right to left, we get A B E C B A. And we can tell it's not a palindrome by this third character here. If we read the string from left to right, the third character is C. If we read the string from right to left, the third character is E. These don't match, and at that point, we would know it's not a palindrome. And that's roughly the algorithm that we're going to follow to determine whether a string is a palindrome or not. We're going to compare the characters on the left side of the string to the corresponding characters on the right side of the string. So that by the time we reach the middle of the string, if all the characters have matched, we'll know that it's a palindrome. If we find a character on the left side of the string that doesn't match with its corresponding character on the right side of the string, we'll know that it's not a palindrome. So let's write a Python function now to solve this problem. We'll call the function is palindrome, and the function will accept a single argument, a string. We'll give the parameter the name text. The first thing we'll do is find the length of the string. So we're gonna say length is equal to len text to find the length of the string. Now to perform the comparisons of the corresponding characters, we're going to use a for loop. We'll have for i in range, and we're going to have zero and length divided by two. So we're going to use i as a counter variable in this loop. And i is going to go from 0 up until the midpoint of the string. Now, we're using what's called integer division here. That means that if the length of the string is an odd number, like, say, 7, this division here will give us 3 instead of 3.5. So integer division is going to round down to the nearest integer. So in the case of an odd length string, i is not going to go right to that middle character of the string. It turns out that doesn't really matter. I'll show you an example of that in a second. So to actually perform the comparison of the corresponding characters, what we're going to do is compare the character at the left-hand side of the string with its corresponding character at the right-hand side of the string. And we're going to use i and length to help us find that character on the right-hand side of the string. So we'll have if text at index i doesn't equal text at length minus i minus 1. So here's where the comparison of the corresponding characters occurs. So i is going to increment from 0 up until the midpoint of the string. So each time this loop body executes, we're going to do a comparison of that next character coming from the left-hand side of the string. And we're going to say if it doesn't equal the character on the right-hand side of the string, we're going to return false, because that means we found a character that doesn't match its corresponding character on the right-hand side of the string, and therefore it's not a palindrome. So we can return false at this point. Now, if we actually do reach the midpoint of the string, and we've never found a character that doesn't match, that means we have a palindrome. And at that point, we can return true, because we do have a palindrome. So let's call this function, and then let's go through a step-by-step -step example to understand how it works better. So we'll call this function with string one and string two. We'll have is palindrome string one, and we'll put the result of this with a print function call. We'll also call is palindrome with string two, and again, we'll use print to output the result. So we're expecting true in the case of race car, and then false in the case of ABC EBA. So we'll save this and try it out. And we get true and false as expected. So the function is working. 
let's actually trace through how it's going to handle one of these examples so we can better understand how it's actually working. So let's look at race car, for example. In the case of race car, the length is going to be seven because we have seven characters. So let's set length to seven. Now each character in the string is going to be stored at an index. Let's represent those indexes. We'll have index zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the characters will be stored at the indexes like this. So now we can better understand what's going on here when the comparisons are made. So first off, length divided by two is going to give us three in this case. So let's have that here as well. We'll have length divided by two is equal to three. So this means the loop is going to stop when i is equal to three. So we're gonna look at index zero, one, and two with this text at index i in each subsequent loop iteration. But what's going on here with this length minus i minus one? What we wanna do is compare this character here to this character here, then this character here to its corresponding character here, then this character here to its corresponding character here. And that does happen with this expression here. So when i is zero, length minus i minus one is going to be seven minus zero minus one, which is going to give us six. So that means we're going to compare this character here at index zero with this character here at index six. Then when i is equal to one, we want to compare this character here with this character here. And that's exactly what length minus i minus one will give us. It's going to give us the index five because we'll have seven is the length minus one for i and minus one gives us five. And we'll compare this character to this character. Then when i is two, we'll have seven minus two minus one gives us four. And we'll compare this character here to this character here. So it does work. Now this whole time we've been doing these comparisons, we've never found a case where the characters don't match. So we never return false. If we ever did find a case where the characters don't match, we just return false and the function ends right there because there's no need to keep going. We know it's not a palindrome at that point. Now you notice when i is equal to three, we stop doing comparisons. So when the string length is odd, we don't go right to the middle of the string. We don't look at this middle character here, e, and we don't need to because e is going to be a match with itself. That middle character will be the same when the string is backwards as it is forwards because it's the middle character. So there's just no value in checking it. Now, if we go through all these characters up to the midway point, and we never find a case where the character doesn't match with its corresponding character on the right-hand side, we know we have a palindrome. And at that point, we return true. So I just wanted to go through the function step-by-step step like that so you can better understand how it's actually working. So this is how we can determine whether a string is a palindrome or not using Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.